Top 10 Worst White Shark Attacks The passion for the sea has exposed many people to terrifying attacks of the great white shark, and there are those who manage to survive to tell the story, as well as many tragic deaths. Stay with us to see this top 10 of the spookiest cases. Number 10. Double Attack it was the year 2000 when Shannon Ansley, who was then 15 years old, was sailing with her brother and her friends on a South African beach in East London. They were right on the Nahoon Reef, known for its good surfing waves and also for the sharks that lived there. After an hour at sea, Shannon continued to practice, when suddenly, an aggressive 15 feet long white shark appeared out of nowhere and attacked him. Its brutal bites damaged one of his hands and also his board. We can see that the most surprising thing is that it was not a common attack but a double attack. Scary, because it is not known that white sharks hunt in groups. Finally, drenched in adrenaline to save his life and ignoring the pain, Ansley managed to escape from the double threat and was able to reach the shore. His ring and small fingers practically hung off, making for a heartbreaking image. Fortunately, the doctors managed to save his hand. However, Shannon believes that it was the double attack that ended up saving him, since in the water, those two beasts were hindered and therefore did not receive the lethal bite. What a fighter! Number 9. Tragic Test It was in 2006 when Ahmad Hassim, 24, and his younger brother, Tariq, attended a life-saving exercise routine at Musenberg Beach in Cape Town. What they did not expect was that on August 13th, it would change their lives forever. Already at sea, during the trials, Ahmad noticed that a gray triangle floated over the area. At first, he was not alert, thinking it could be a seal or a dolphin, but then he noticed a greater danger. A stalking white shark was approaching Tariq. Then he screamed, and seeing that the nearest boat would not come to the rescue, decided to splash the water to distract the 15.5-foot-long shark. Suddenly, the shadow changed direction. His brother was safe but he would end up being attacked violently, losing half of his right leg. How unfortunate. His dream of becoming a professional footballer disintegrated, but not his desire to excel. He took the opportunity to become a Paralympic swimmer, earning himself the nickname of the Shark Boy, as well as a bronze medal in London 2012. Currently, far from holding a grudge for the animal that attacked him, he shows his great appreciation by being a marine conservationist. Admirable. Number 8. Esperance Shark Attack It was October 2014 when Sean Pollard, 23, taught his girlfriend Claire Oakford how to surf on a beach in Wiley Bay in the Australian city of Esperance. Everything was fine until he decided to lie on the sand to sunbathe and Sean moved away a bit with aiming to catch big waves. Their battle to survive against two great 10 and almost 16 feet long white sharks would begin. The young Pollard was attacked by the first shark that resulted in painful bites to his legs. Then, after trying to defend himself with his board, the beast tore off both hands. In the end, his entire left arm was also snatched away. The waters were stained with blood, and then the second great white shark appeared, which hit him. But fortunately, at that precise moment, a wave broke out that helped the wounded man escape death. He was able to reach the shore where four people who knew about first aid saved his life. After the terrible event, Sean Pollard had to leave sailing and surfing, but like Ahmad Hassim, he also managed to get his life back on track snowboarding, and competing at a professional level. Number 7. The Champion Attacked In 2012, David Lillenfeld, 20 years old, was the South African champion of water sports bodyboarding. He and his brother Gustav were surfing in Kogel Bay, very close to Cape Town. Everything was going smoothly when a white shark between 13 and 16 feet long sidled towards David until the first blow hurt his right leg considerably close to the thigh. Before the attack, the bodyboarder tried to use his board to stop it, pushing the head of the elusive shark, but it was not enough. In the second onslaught, the waters were red-stained immediately. According to witnesses, David screamed for the last time while being submerged violently. After that, Gustav took the body to shore and after wrapping it, sat on the rocks with his father Dirk Lillenfeld to say his last goodbyes to the ocean-loving son and brother, waiting for their respective authorities. Very touching. Number 6. Diver in Danger On the morning of September 15, 1984, the sky was cloudy and the sea calm between Half Moon Bay and Santa Cruz in California. Omar Conger, 28, 
and his partner Chris Rem were diving about 500 feet off the coast in search of abalone, an edible mollusk, when they decided to take a break. It was then that Conger, resting vertically in the water, suffered a surprising attack from a 16-foot-long white shark in the back. It caught him, shook him, and submerged him. A few seconds later, the predator emerged to the surface as a great submarine with the victim still inside his mouth, then decided to go to the frightened friend, freeing the diver's badly wounded body, and in those moments of great anguish, Rem reacted. He swam towards Conger to put him on a mat, taking him to the shore, but unfortunately, the effort did not help much because Omar Conger, product of the multiple lacerations on his legs, hands, and buttocks, bled to death. Number 5. Fatal End This is Sam Kellett, a 24-year-old high school teacher who was preparing for a spearfishing competition off the waters in the York Peninsula in southern Australia. It was February 2014, and he had planned to dive for free in Inez National Park with his friends, but a fire warning forced them to go to Goldsmith Beach. While Sam was fishing, hungry 16-foot-long sharks appeared and practically ate him whole. Yeah, just like you heard it. Mr. Kellett was totally devoured, and no trace of him was left. The police could only find two lead weights and their spear, a weapon that had teeth incisions compatible with those of a great white shark. In the place that he was last seen, a striking pool of blood shocked everyone in the place. A fatal end. Number 4. The Sea, Life, and Death Randall Fry was a quintessential lover of the ocean. He was very dedicated to the fisherman organization and was the main voice in Western recreational fishing. On August 15, 2004, Randy practiced free diving to trap abalone with his great friend Cliff Zimmerman in Westport, California. Fry was floating on the surface on a bed of seaweed when he began his descent to the bottom of the sea. In that course, he was mortally beaten by a large white shark between 16 and 18 feet in length. It was so imposing. Everything was so fast and the waters were stirring so hard from the attack that Zimmerman, impacted, swam for his life about 150 feet away until he reached his boat. The next day, a rescue team found Fry's body. His head had been separated from his body. Bite marks, extending from shoulder to shoulder, confirmed the executioner as a white shark. He loved the ocean so much that his life ended right there. Quite an irony. Number 3. The Bestial Shark According to the Australian shark attack file, the average number of human deaths in the last 50 years is 1.2, very similar to that of Florida. However, it is the shark attacks that ended the life of Shirley Ann Durden in 1985, those that would have given the oceanic country the reputation of being a place where one would have to think twice before getting into the sea. Durden, 33, and a mother of four, went diving with her husband and another man to Peak Bay in southern Australia. She was about to catch scallops seven feet deep when she was savagely attacked by a 20-foot-long white shark. The colossal shark ripped it in half in the eyes of her partner and her little children. When the rescue workers arrived, all that was left was a headless torso. But that was not all. The insatiable sea beast returned to devour the remains of the body. Hallucinating. Number 2. The Gigantic Devourer in June of 1959, Robert Pamperin and Gerald Letter were diving freely using only masks, fins, and snorkels in search of abalone on the beach of La Jolla Cove in California. Letter was submerged in the water when a large shadow passed very close to him, blocking the sunlight under the water. Somewhat puzzled, he was deciding whether to keep looking for mollusks or alert Pamperin, but before doing anything, he needed to breathe. After surfacing, he heard the screams of his friend asking for help. It was too late. Robert Pamperin was being attacked by a giant white shark of about 23 feet long. His body could be seen rising above the water, struggling violently to escape. However, his legs were already trapped in the mouth of the fierce shark. The large triangular teeth were becoming more noticeable, and Lehrer's desperate attempts to frighten him were useless, so he had nothing to do but swim to the shore. There was no trace left of his friend, except one of his fins. What a disgrace. Number 1. Survival this case of shark attack is perhaps one of the most emblematic in history. On December 8, 1963, a young insurance salesman named Rodney Fox was participating in a spearfishing competition in Aldinga Beach in southern Australia. Everything went smoothly when he suddenly felt a strong impact as if he was hit by a train. It was a great white shark that attacked him mercilessly up to three times. Badly hurt and about to drown, Fox was rescued and taken to the nearest boat. 
He suffered a ruptured rib, a collapsed lung, a ruptured spleen, and deep arc-shaped lacerations from his shoulder to his waist. The scars are really creepy. Fortunately, his main arteries remained intact, and after four hours of surgery and a total of 462 stitches, he lived to tell the tale. He even still has a shark tooth embedded in one of his wrists. Definitely, this white shark attack is the worst in which the victim has survived. Ten years later, after Fox decided to specialize in such sharks, he received the call of Steven Spielberg to help him with his film project, Jaws, a real-life character. Were you surprised by these ruthless attacks of the great white shark? Well, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and activate notifications so you don't miss a single video. Until next time!